Welcome back to Manic Mods. The Fabaro Switch 2 is on my top 10 smart device list for good reason. If you have a ceiling fan light with only one main, installing the switch into the fan allows independent control of the fan and light. While this is my primary use case, it can also be installed behind an outlet or a standard wall switch to automate that circuit. Hidden out of sight, you might even see your wife approval factor go up. Like the Swiss Army knife of smart switches, it is also Z-Wave compatible, UL listed, and provides power metering. Today, I will detail three use cases, give you an overview of installation, as well as tips and tricks. The Fabaro double switch can provide two switched outputs from a single main and all in a relatively small footprint. Before installing, an important consideration is that you will need a switch connected to it or access to the module to enable pairing mode. In my application, I no longer wanted a main switch to the ceiling fan and light. I chose to hardwire this circuit closed for simplicity's sake, but you can save some time by adding a light switch cover to ensure the same. Not those covers, more like this one. You could also leave the switch entirely intact for additional control. I'm not a fan of this method because the switch will not always represent the state of the circuit when switched wirelessly. To make my life easier, I paired the Fabaro on my workbench by connecting the neutral and line wire. After connecting these two terminals and triple tapping the service button, your smart hub should find the switch. I wanted to provide a simplified overview of how the module is connected. The junction box on the left is an ungrounded equivalent of your standard fan switch circuit. The white neutral and black line come into the box. This is a standard switch. The neutral goes directly to the box on the right, simulating your fan's wiring area. In my home, the line voltage was also passed to the fan so it can always be turned on by its pull switch. The same line is also connected to the switch, which passes the red switched wire to the fan light. This is the switch I removed in my installation, tying the hot and switched output together. The top LED here represents the fan light and bottom represents the fan. In this example, you can see both the fan and the light are tied into neutral, and the lines are connected to Q1 and Q2, which are the Fabaro load outputs. In this example, my switch line connects to S1 for switch 1. Within your fan, you should be able to identify neutral by a grouping of white wires. Please work safely and ensure your breaker is off. We're, we're just so fleshy and electricity runs through us like bad Chipotle, but instead of killing everybody around you, you're just going to hurt yourself. Where was I? Oh yes. Within your fan, you should be able to identify the neutral by a grouping of white wires. You will be tasked with extending this neutral to the end connection of the Fabaro. I did mention that this module can be used without neutral, but this is only true for the dimming version and this is not. With that said, I would still use a neutral wire for the dimming version if I had the option to improve the reliability. After the neutral wire connection is made, you will want to provide it line voltage. I knew my fan always had power, so I looked to the black wire going into the fan's pull chain. I cut this wire in half and the end that came from the top of the fan was connected to the L or line connection of the Fabaro and the other end of the black wire going to the fan switch was connected to Q2, second load output. Our final connection will be for the fan light. You should find two wires that run to your light. One will be a white neutral and the other may be red or blue. If you follow the non-white wire, you will likely see it connected to your pull chain switch for the light. You will cut that wire and connect the half that goes to the light to Q1 on the Fabaro controller. I capped the other half, but you could also connect it to S1 to retain the pull chain light switch. In my application, I removed the pull chain switch altogether and poked the antenna out of the hole that remained. After installation, I programmed my scene controllers to control the double switch. Since wiring can vary within fans and homes, I wouldn't suggest deviating unless you're 100% comfortable. If you do have questions about your setup, you could drop me a question below and I'm happy to help. I've purchased a few smart outlets over the years that have been less than reliable. You could use this Fabaro switch too to control an existing outlet to retain the aesthetics or hide <coughs> from the wife. <clears throat> Before you consider this solution, I suggest referring to the documentation to determine the load capacity. This double switch 2 has an 8 amp load, so I would not recommend for applications over 800 watts. To control an outlet, you'd first connect neutral to the end connector of the Fabaro. You should be able to borrow from a common neutral point or piggyback from the outlet itself. The black line that originally connected to the outlet is removed and connected to the L connector, the line connector of the Fabaro. Finally, add a red wire from the Q1 or Q2 to the side of the outlet you remove the black line from. 
Installing the Fabaro behind a standard wall switch is a common use case, but I will always recommend you replace that switch with an actual smart switch instead. While a manual switch can control the circuit when connected to the Fabaro, the switch's physical state will not always represent the state of the circuit. Also, if you have a shallow electrical box, you may not be able to even fit the Fabaro switch behind it. These exceptions aside, this configuration still has use cases. In this example, a neutral wire should be extended to the end connection of the Fabaro. If you do not have a neutral, the dimming version does not require it as previously mentioned. By the way, if you're only interested in the Fabaro switch because of a no neutral application, there are smart switches now that have this functionality. And as previously mentioned, I will always use the neutral wire if I have the option for better reliability. From my fan example, you will recall the switch interrupts the line voltage to the switch device. Since the module will require line voltage, you can add a wire from this point. If it's a multi-gang box, you may also see a bundle of blacks wire nutted, which you can connect to as well. All the module would need now is the switch and load. You should be able to remove the red wire from the switch and connect it to Q1. A new wire is ran from S1 to the switch where you remove the red wire from. To add a second switch, you'd repeat these last two steps, but use Q2 and S2. That's gonna do it. I hope you found this video as useful as I found entertaining. Why did I find entertaining? Because I could not stop saying, Fibaro, excuse me. It's not that funny. Fibaro, 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 Fibaro. If you like the content, please like the content. You can see more of my favorite switches in my top 10 smart home devices video. I elaborated on this per popular demand, so if you'd like to learn more about anything else I cover, please let me know in comments below. And if you wanna see more content like this, you know what to do.